has made we shall rejoice and be glad in it once again it is thursday night our communion night we come to you right into your home right into your house at the comfort of your sitting room thank you so much for opening your doors for us and we come to celebrate the communion with you tonight and by the celebration of the communion there are things you are going over there are things you are going to cross over in the name of the lord jesus christ remember the communion is the backbone it is the backbone of Christianity. Mm -hmm. The whole message of Christianity is laid in the, communi in the communion. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus said, do this as often as you do it mm -hmm. in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. The communion is something that we need to do on, on a, uh, uh, as often as we possibly can. If we can do it on a daily basis, the better. But for now, we are doing it every Thursday night, coming to your home and uh, celebrating the communion with you. Mm -hmm. This has nothing to do with the denominations. This is for a believer, for believers, those who are born again. If you are born again, you are welcome to participate of the communion. And before we move on, let me ask you, Joyce, to bring greetings and then we hit the road. Come on, Joyce. Amen. Welcome to today's service. And uh, as we continue, I want to let you know that there is a prophetic word that is coming for you, a rema word. So just stay expectant as the servant of God is speaking because he will speak in your life and there is a word he's about to release to you which will change your life completely in Jesus' name. Remember, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread no. alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Father. So tonight, I pray that in the many words that I will speak, that you will hear one word from God that will transform your life. One word from God that will transform your situation. One word from God that will change your life completely. Because the word of God will never go back to him void. It shall accomplish that which it was sent to do. Therefore, as you capture, your desire tonight should be, Lord, let me capture that one word which is from your presence. That one word from your throne. That one word that will transform my situation. That one word that will bring healing into my body, into my business, into my marriage, into this situation. Let healing come by the word that you give me tonight. Therefore, as we celebrate the communion, I pray that your spirit is open, your heart is receptive, and your mind is open to receive the ever-living, incorruptible word of God that will transforms the lives of the people, and yet it never changes itself. The way it was, it has never changed. The, its power never diminishes and never increases. It is the same yesterday, today, and forever. For in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. And that's why uh, Hebrews 13, 8 tells us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, we come to you with this same Word that is powerful, that it will change your life. Thank you so very much. By now, I know, I, I presume you are ready for the communion. You have your Bible. You have your notebook, you have your pen, your family is seated together. You have the elements ready, you have the bread, we have the cup. Everything is ready and now we are ready to go. Now for us to get to the scriptures this morning, we will go to the book of Mark chapter number 4. In Mark chapter number 4, we will read from verse number 35 through to the end. We'll read from verse number 35 through to the end. Let us read Joyce as we move. On the same day, on the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, he said to his disciples, let us cross over to the other side. I want you to mark those words that are very, very crucial. Let us cross over 
to the other side. In other words, we have a destination. And our destination is the other side of the sea. Okay, let's move. Now, when they had left the multitude, uh -huh. they took him along in the boat as he was. Yes. And other little boats were also with him. Very good. And a, li and a great windstorm arose. A great windstorm arose. And there arose a great storm in the sea when they were already in the sea. Uh -huh. And the waves beat into the boat. And the waves beat into the boat. So that it was already filling. Uh -huh. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. Asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him. They said to him. Teacher. Teacher. Do you not care that we are perishing? Don't you care that we perish, man? Then he arose and rebuked the wind. He arose and rebuked the wind. And said to the sea. And said to the sea. Peace. Aha. Uh -huh. Be still. Peace. Be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And the wind obeyed. Verse 40. Uh -huh. But he said to them, uh, Yes. Why are you so fearful? Fearful. Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Fear and faith have a relationship. And they feared exceedingly and said to one another. They continued fearing exceedingly. Much fear came upon them. And they spoke to one another. Who can this be? Uh -huh. That even the wind and the sea obey him. Even the wind and the sea obey him. Even the wind and the sea obey him. Now, tonight, as we celebrate the communion, I want you to know our celebration, the, the communion tonight, is to help us cross over. We are crossing over to the other side. In other words, there are obstacles that are sitting on, on your way. There are obstacles that are saying you can't make it. But by the communion, we are going over to the other side. Now look at the scenario. Jesus has spent the day teaching the people. He has spent the day teaching the people. And the Bible says that with many parables, he taught them with many parables. He gave them the parable of the sower. He gave them the parable of the mustard seed. He taught the word with many parables. Now remember, Jesus always used parables. Stories that helped illustrate a point. Stories that helped illustrate a point. So that the people, the hearers, could understand. I want you to know, it is important to understand the word. So that when you hear, you hear with your spirit and understand with your spirit because hearing creates faith hearing creates faith and faith brings understanding the scriptures say in hebrews by faith we understand by faith we understand so faith comes by hearing you hear the word and faith is built in you the faith that is built in you brings in understanding it brings in understanding it is understanding that gives you the boldness to act on the word it is understanding that gives you the boldness to stand on the word that has built faith in you which you know that it is true regardless of the circumstances regardless of the surroundings therefore as i come to you with the word of the lord tonight i want you to know that the word of god goes beyond your problem the word of god is beyond your predicament the word of god is above your failures the word of god is above your riches the word of God is above your poverty. The word of God is above your ability. So if there is anything that you need, it is to abide by the word. It is to capture the word. Because when you capture the word, it will change your life. It will change your life completely. Now, when we look at the word that we have read, it says, on the same day, which day? The day that Jesus had, had spent with his disciples teaching. Let me tell you, my friend, if there is a work that tires, it is the work of talking. If there is a job that tires, 
that takes all the strength out of the human body. It is the, the, it is the, the speaking, the talking, the preaching. Now, Jesus has spent the whole day teaching the word with many parables. Now the evening has come. When the evening ha comes, he tells them, let's cross over to the other side. In other words, men, I am tired. I am exhausted. Let's go over to the other side that I may have some, some rest. And we see when they had left the multitude, they leave the multitude. When they leave the multitude, they go with him. They took with him with them. And the Bible records, he, they took him along in the boat as he was. They took him along in the boat as he was. How was he? Number one, he was exhausted. Number two, he was tired. Number three, he must have been hungry. Because the whole day, he had spent the whole day teaching. How do we know he was tired? How do we know these things? Because as soon as he got into the boat, he went sleeping. And when he slept, he didn't sleep with like the rabbit. The stories we used to hear about the rabbit, Joyce, where the rabbit would sleep with one eye open so that he could see who is passing by. No, no, no. When he slept, he slept for, for, for. He slept good. He slept soundly. I want to speak to somebody here who has not been having sleep. I am speaking to somebody who has not been having enough sleep. You have been tossing up in bed. Every time you hit your bed, sleep just disappears. Before you go to bed, you feel sleepy. Before you go to bed, you feel exhausted. As soon as you hit your bed, sleep disappears. I am talking to you right now, today, by the communion, we are going over. We are going over. Jesus gets into the boat. And as soon as he gets into the boat, he goes and sleeps. He goes in, uh, in the stand and he sleeps. And he sleeps good. How do I know that he sleeps good? Be, be, by the words of the disciples, he had to be woken up. I happened to have been in a boat once or twice. And there was no storm. But I can tell you, even when there is no storm, Again, depending on the size of the boat, you will still feel the, the waves. You will still feel being tossed. One day, let me tell you, Joyce. One day, George, Bishop George and I went to Alaska, Anchorage, Alaska. And our host, David Rebisky, David Rebisky gave us a treat. And he said, let's go fishing, boys. These African boys got into a boat. We thought we were going to get into a big boat where you feel comfortable. Instead of get, getting a boat, we went there and we saw it was a canvas. Canvas, they put some air in it and then that's all. You sit on it, we go fishing. And we are asking, where is the boat? And he says, this is it. He puts an engine at the back and he kicks off. Then he dresses up. He dresses us up with all this stuff and uh, a lot of things I don't have time to explain. So we are moving, and I've seen it in movies. Both, I had seen it in movies, boats going like this. And I was saying, they are, they are, they are, they are maraigua muejoy, something like that. I don't know what it is in English. That they are enjoying themselves as the boat is going up the waves. But on that day, I discovered there is nothing that enjoying. That caffeine. When it hit the water, you would feel the pinch at the bottom because it just is as if you are sitting on a wood. Boop, boop, boop. And we would say, oh man, George would look at me and say, oh Mosaiga, where are we going? He would say, oh Mark, where are we going? And our host tells us where we are going to fishing. It is, four, it is 40, 40 feet. Is it 40? Yeah, 40 feet. The place is 40 feet deep. And then he tells us the water is... Five degrees only. If you fell into this water, you will not finish five minutes. You will not, uh, you will not finish five minutes before you, before you freeze. And then we ask him, so why did you give us this, these things? If, 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 there, if there was no chance of survival. And then he tells us, so that if you, should you die, should you fall into the water, you will not be eaten by the fish, you will float. And then we can tow you out of the boat. Oh man, it was not a treat, but it was an experience. Now, 
in that kabut, as it hits the waves, you would feel the pain. Now think, Jesus is in a boat. And this boat is in the sea. And there is no storm. And our friend in Alaska told us, this is calm. This is a very calm sea. There is, and we, yet we could feel the bumps. Now Jesus is in the boat and he is asleep. On a pillow, he is dead asleep. The, the bumping, the storm, he is not hearing anything. He is not capturing anything. But the disciples are struggling. So they took him as he was. As he was. And they took him tired as he was. Frustrated as he was. Exhausted as he was. Hungry as he was. They said, went with him. They went with him. Now, when they went with him, what happened? The Bible tells us a storm, the, a great storm arose. The wind came and a storm came and the waves beat into the boat. And as the waves beat into the boat, water was getting into the boat. And Peter and the disciples, I assume, as experienced fishermen, were busy removing the water. They were busy removing the water. But as they removed it, the more came. I wa the, more, uh, the more the water came. I want to say to you, my friend, you could be facing a storm right now in life. I am speaking to you with this in my spirit that there is somebody facing a storm. You are facing a storm in your boat. You are facing a storm in your life. You are facing a storm in, in, as in your business. Your marriage is facing a storm. Your family is going over a, through a storm. I want to say to you, my friend, storms in life have not come to finish you. Amen. Why? We have the word of the Lord. We have the, we have the word of the master. The word of the master was, let us cross over to the other side. That was the word. I want you to know that the word of the Lord will never go back to him void. Jesus was asleep in the boat because he had the word of the Lord. Let me tell you what will give you peace in your situation. It is the word of the Lord. What will, you give, what will give you joy in your predicament? It is the word of the Lord. Because you have the word of the Lord where he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He says that he gives sleep to his beloved. He gives sleep to his beloved. Capture that word and declare, I am the beloved of the Lord. I am not counted among those who will have no sleep, but I am counted among those who are given sleep by the Lord. That even when I have dozed the whole day, as I go to my bed, I will sleep good. Why? My sleep does not come from my exhaustion. My sleep does not come from where I have been. My sleep does not come from my bones or from my head. My sleep comes from the Lord. I want to say to you, my friend, by the communion tonight, your situation is turning around. Amen. By the communion tonight, your situation is turning around. Amen. Why? Because Jehovah is our source. Jehovah is our source. So the storm has come. It's beating up the, on the boat. It is tossing the boat on side to side. But Jesus is asleep. Let me ask you, my friend, how much storm are you experiencing? There are parents right now, as I talk to you, even your son does not want to look at you. Your daughter does not want to look at you because they know the storm that they have put you through. You don't want to look at one another because you know the storm you are facing. I want you to know that there's, uh, your husband is not your storm. Your wife is not your storm. Your children are not the, st the storm. They also are facing a storm in their own se selves. Your, your spouse is also facing a storm. So these storms in life, 
They come, but they will not finish you because we have the word of the Lord. We have the word of the Lord. And the waves beat upon the boat. The waves beat upon the boat. And as the waves beat upon the boat, and the water was filling up, as Jesus was asleep, the disciples decided, enough is enough. Let us go and wake him up. Let us go and wake the master up. I want to say to you, my friend, the difference, what will make a difference in your life? What will bring change in your situation? It is not your crying. It is not the witch doctors. It is not the wizards. It is not the bank. It is not a bank loan. What will make a difference in your life is the life of God. The presence of the master in your marriage. The presence of the master in your business. The presence of the master in your family. Well, I'll wake the master up. Let the master take his position. You have been in that house. You have even put that kabao I used to see put on the walls. That he is a silent listener. He is a silent listener to every conversation. He is the unseen guest. He is the silent listener. Oh man, remove it off. Don't, don't make him be the unseen. Let him be the invited guest. Let him be the residence. Let him make you his abode. Let him make you his residence. When the master becomes, makes you his residence, even the storm, obey him. Even the wind, obey him. Even the fire obeys him. What fires are you going through? Have you become like a fire extinguisher? Have you become a fire extinguisher? That you are running from one son to the other, extinguishing fires into their, in their marriages. You are running from your daughter's uh, marriage to your son's marriage, trying to put the fire off. I came to say to you, my friend, let Christ be the chief in that house. It is the presence of the master that makes the difference. The presence of Jesus in the boat, although he was asleep, made all the difference. The disciples decided we are not going to die when he is here. We are not going to perish while he is here. They went to him and woke him up. But you look at their attitude. Look at their attitude as they wake him up. As they wake him up, they are not telling him what the problem is. They are blaming him. They are saying, teacher, do you not care? In other words, we know your ability. We know your power. We know what you can do. And now we are in this predicament. We are sweating. We have tried to kick the water out. We have tried to throw the water out. Nothing doing. Don't you care? Don't you care? We are perishing. In other words, they have already seen themselves done. They have already seen themselves perishing. I came to say to you, my friend, you are not perishing. Amen. I came to, you to say to you, my friend, you are not perishing. Mm -hmm. Your family is not going under. Mm -hmm. Your children are not going under. Right now, they may be into drugs. Right now, they may be into alcohol. Right now, they may have run away from home. Right now, you have not seen your daughter for the last three days. And you don't know where she is. Right now. You are being frustrated. They are frustrating you. I want to say to you by the word of the Lord, they are not going under. You are going to the other side. The mission of Jesus was not to be finished in the sea. The mission of Jesus was not to end in the sea. The mission of Jesus was not death. And he had told the disciples, we are crossing over to the other side. We are getting over to the other side. And I came to say to you, my friend, let us speak together. We are going over. As we get, get stuck together, as we move together, we are going over. As we partake of the communion tonight, we are going over. I do not know what your predicament is. I do not know what your frustration is. I do not know what battles you are going through. But I know this one thing. You are not perishing. Amen. 
you are not perishing. I came to say to you, you are not perishing. Why? Because the word of the Lord says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be delivered. Therefore, you can change the course of your boat. You can change the course of the wind. You can change the direction of the wind by letting the master take over. By calling the master and tell the master, Master, things are difficult. Master, things are not going on well. They blame the master. Don't you care that we perish? What happens? Verse number 39 says, He rose up. When he rose up, he rebuked the wind. He rebuked the wind. When he rose up, first of all, he ignored the disciples. He dealt with the problem before he could deal with the disciples. He rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. I come to you, my friend. You may be, you may have stolen. You may be a murderer. You may be a bad thief. Maybe you are a robber. Maybe you are a rapist. Whatever you are, whoever you are, maybe you are a wife bitter. Maybe you are a husband bitter. Whoever you are, whatever you are, let the master arise. For when the master arises, he will deal with your problem first. He will deal with the situation first. He rebuked the wind and the sea. How did he rebuke that? By his word. By his word. The Bible says in John 1 and verse number 1, In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. I want you to know your problem is subject to the word. Your predicament is subject to the word. Your situation is subject to the word. For the word was there from the beginning. And the word that I speak to you is the word of life. The word that I declare to you is the word of peace. He rebuked the sea. He rebuked the wind and the sea and said, Peace, be still. And the Bible says, The wind ceased and there was great calm. I prophesy to you, my friend, by the communion tonight, every storm that has been hitting your marriage shall cease. I prophesy to you, my friend, every storm that has been hitting your business, that has been hitting your family, shall come to an end. Are you willing and obedient? The Isaiah says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. In other words, in this land, there is good. In this land, there is good. And it is yours for the eating. It is yours for the taking. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. It was come. The sea obeyed. The wind ceased. It was come. And I speak to you by the communion tonight. As you partake of the communion, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, come into your life, come into your family. May the peace of God come into your, into a situation in the name of Jesus Christ, that there may be a turning around, that there may be a change. There was perfect calm. And with that come we see what what happened verse number 40 he said why are you so fearful in other words your fear is bringing anxiety to you your fear is keeping your faith from operating why are you so fearful how is it that you have no faith i told you we are crossing over to the other side you are telling me we are perish perishing why are you faithless? Why are you fearful? Let me tell you, my friend, in life, situations will come to bring fear to you. Refuse to be afraid. 
refuse to be afraid. How do you refuse to be afraid? By standing on the word. By standing on the word. I don't know, I don't know whether you watch, I watch this guy. I, I, saw, I saw in the social media, some thieves get into a shop, into a bar. And there are these people who are drinking there. And this guy comes with a gun with an AK-47 and tells everybody go, get down. But there is this one guy who decides I'm not getting down, I'm not even concerned about you, and ignores the thief completely. Com he tried to poke him with a, with a gun, and the guy just ignored. He continued. He was even smoking, and he continued drinking. The thief realizing this guy is wasting time. He goes around, he gets the money from the cashier, he gets the wallets of the, of the others, and uh, uh, after some time, he just disappears. This guy just continues with his business as if there was nothing. And this may, may look a negative. It may look a negative example. But I want to show you the effect of fearlessness. That this guy decides, I'm not going to fear this guy. I'm not going to get involved. I will go ahead and do what I am doing. I am saying to you, my friend, don't allow fear to rule in your heart. Because fear will chase away faith. But when faith comes, fear disappears. Therefore, by the communion tonight, we are crossing over. Amen. We are crossing over. I came to say to you, it is time for us to cross over. As we break the bread, as we partake of the cup, I want you to know, you receive the word. You receive the courage that we are crossing over. You are going over that situation. You are going over that sickness. You are going over that failure. You are going over that frustration. In the name of Jesus Christ. Join me, my friend. Let you and your family join me as we cross over. Our mission is to the other side. Not into the sea. Not in the boat. The boat is just a means to take us to the other side. Whatever you are facing, it will not finish you. Amen. It will not finish you. Therefore, let us partake of the communion now. And as we partake of the communion, may the blood of the Lamb, may the broken body of Jesus Christ come into your situation in the name of Jesus Christ. Paul writes to the Corinthians and he says to them, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this piece of bread. I break it tonight in remembrance of the broken body of Jesus Christ that was broken for us. And right now, may the working of the broken body of Christ and the blood work in our situations in the name of Jesus Christ. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Father, I thank you for the blood that was shed out of the body of Jesus. Let it accomplish its work in every one of us, building our faith and our confidence that we are going over this predicament. We are going over this challenge that we are people have been facing. We are going over in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, right there where you are, let me ask you this question. Are you born again? Have you given your life to Jesus? If you have not given your life to Jesus, I want to pray with you right now that you may partake of the communion. Pray with me and say, Father, Father in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you. I come to you right now. Right now. I acknowledge. I acknowledge that the work done, that the work done at the cross of Calvary. At the of Calvary. By Jesus Christ, by Jesus Christ was, for was for me. He died for me. He died for was buried for me. Was buried resurrected for me. Resurrected and ascended into heaven for me. And ascended into heaven for and me. And is coming again for me. And is coming again for me. Therefore, therefore, right now, right 
willingly I open up my spirit come into me now and make me a new creature I receive you Lord as my savior in Jesus name Amen congratulations my friend you are now born again just by that prayer you are born again now you can partake of the communion whoever is the priest on duty whoever is the priest in the house now serve the people in your house with the communion in the name of Jesus Christ and as we partake of the bread the Bible tells us to wait for one another so I'm waiting on you to get ready so that we can partake together let us partake of the bread together in the name of Jesus, the body of Jesus Christ. After taking the bread, they took the cup and partook of the cup. Let us partake together. Now take time and start thanking God. Just take your time, whatever you are, wherever you are, in your home, in your office, wherever you are, take time and start thanking God. Tell the Lord, Father, I thank you. I thank you that I'm going over. I thank you that this challenge is not permanent. This storm is not permanent. You could be going through many storms, but those storms are not permanent. Thank God for the deliverance out of that storm and that your sea is come. That the wind ceases, the wind from the in-laws, the wind from business colleagues, the wind from neighbors that has been beating on you comes to an end right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And you receive your peace, that you can have peace, you sleep good, you work good, you wake up good in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, I thank you for the working of the Holy Spirit in my life. Glorify your name, Jehovah. I bless you and I honor you. I exalt you, Jehovah. Thank you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Walk in that victory. Walk in the peace of God. Walk in the calmness of God. That thing that has been disturbing you in your mind, let it be calmed. It's calmed now. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk in the victory of the Lord. And please tell us what has happened. Tell us what God has done in your life. Because our God is a miracle working God. He is still in the miracle working business. God bless you. I love you and I value you. You are important. May the Lord richly bless you. Now you know, by now you know, that the worship is not complete. Worship is not complete without placing the sacrifice on the altar. And I want you to bring in your offering and place it at the altar. Right there where you are, in your home, in, in your car, wherever you are. Please get ready with your sacrifice. Get ready with your offering. You can use our pay bill number. Our m -Pesa pay bill number is 525107. 525107. And the, MP and the account is tithe or offering. Tithe or offering or other. Once you have done that, please send me the confirmation. Send me the confirmation so that I can respond back. May the Lord richly bless you. Thank you so very much. So many of you have been faithful. Faithful in your giving. Faithful in whatever, in, uh, in, with your offerings. Faithful with your tithes. May the Lord richly bless you that you may grow into that what, into what God has purposed you to grow. Some of you are sick in your body. When, as you go to bed, you will rise up in the morning completely whole. That headache is gone. That, that, that headache is gone and gone forever. That nightmare thing is gone. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Those powers that have been visiting you in the night, you will see them no more in the name of Jesus Christ. Enjoy the blessings of the Lord. Enjoy the working of the communion. Enjoy the power of the blood. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.